Good evening and welcome to the Planning Commission meeting of June 7th, 2023. Any changes from staff? Madam Chair, we have no changes at this time. No changes? Commissioners? Move approval. Second. If not, okay, motion made by Commissioner Schindler and seconded by Commissioner Scanlon. Any questions? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered routine and will be enacted with a single motion without discussion unless a commissioner or a citizen requests to have any items separately considered. It will then be moved to the land use action items for consideration. 3A, approve the minutes of May 17th, 2023 regular meeting. Madam Chair, I recommend approval of the uh, consent agenda. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Scanlon and seconded by Commissioner Schindler. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Brings us to 3B, Eagle Point Model Home Permit. Actually, Madam Chair, that was under consent. So oh. if if the commission is comfortable, they can they've approved it and we can move on to the next item. Do we have to approve it again or was it all done on the consent? Yeah. Chair? Madam Chair, you can just get a consensus that everyone understood it's under the consent and it should be sufficient. Does everybody understand that you can uh, approve that also? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. That brings us to number four, and that is our public hearings. And we have a few tonight. So the first one is the Apple Valley High School Turf Field Accessory Storage Building, and that is with Kathy Bodmer. And I will open the hearing. We will now open the public hearing for Agenda 4A. The affidavit of publication for the notice of public hearing is available for inspection in the planning department. Everyone wishing to speak at this public hearing should be sure to fill out the attendance roster with their names and addresses so that accurate records can be maintained. We will begin the procedure with a brief presentation by city staff, followed by a presentation by the petitioner of the hearing. Upon the conclusion of the presentation, city staff will be asked to comment on the proposal's conformance with pertinent regulations and policies. After that, comments will be taken from the general public. Please come to the podium to speak and address all comments and questions to the chair. Kathy. Good evening, Madam Chair and Commission members. The petitioner of this request is Independent School District 196. Uh, ISD 196 recently constructed new artificial turf play fields at each of its four high schools. Um, in Apple Valley specifically, uh, the, the two high schools, Apple Valley High School and Eastview High School, were both completed in 2021. In connection with that project, <coughs> a pad was constructed beside the, build, beside the field area to allow for a 30 foot by 50 foot accessory storage building. So ISD 196 as petitioner is requesting the following land use <clears throat> actions in order to construct a 1500 square foot accessory storage building. They're looking for a conditional use permit to construct an accessory storage building when one already exists on the site. Second, a variance to increase the maximum size of the storage building from 1,400 to 1,500, and then a variance to increase the maximum number of storage buildings on the site from two to six. Apple Valley High School property is located at 14450 Hayes Road. Uh, the field, the newly constructed field, uh, will be north of the high school building, and then the pad sits kind of on the southeast corner. The property is zoned P institutional. And within the institutional zoning district, one accessory storage building less than 100, 750 square feet is permitted in the zone. Um, in order to do a building larger than 750, or if another accessory storage building is on the site, 
they need to get a conditional use permit. So that's why the conditional use permit is requested. Within the permit, there are a couple of restrictions. Um, one is that the building shall not exceed 1,400 square feet. And then second, no more than two accessory storage buildings shall be permitted on the lot or the parcel. Uh, Apple Valley High School currently has five accessory storage buildings, and this would be the sixth. So again, uh, conditional use permit and two variances is what the, the extent of the request. So again, the um, pad for the building would be on that southeast <coughs> corner. Uh, this uh, north is to your right, so this is just kind of a site plan showing where the building would be located. <clears throat> Floor plan shows a pretty simple layout, um, 30 by 50. Um, on two ends, there is a roll-up door and a utility door, roll-up door and utility door. Exterior elevations are pretty simple, a typical utility building. Um, lap siding, gable roof, uh, asphalt shingles, nothing much to report on that. So when the city reviews a request for a variance, um, the, the city needs to review uh, whether the property owner has uh, demonstrated that they have a practical difficulty um, on the site or as a part of the application that prevents them from meeting the requirements of the zoning code. So we, the city starts with first the definition of practical difficulty. Applicant proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner. Uh, the plight of the applicant is due to circumstances unique to the property. Variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Economic considerations alone do not con constitute practical difficulties. So we start with the definition and then we move into the factors. Special conditions apply to the structure or land that are particular to the property. Uh, the granting of the variance will not be contrary to the intent of the chapter. Special conditions or circumstances do not result from the action of the owner applicant. Granting of the variance will not serve as merely a convenience to the applicant but is necessary to alleviate practical difficulties. And last, the variance requested is the minimum variance necessary to alleviate the practical difficulty. The, uh, in the um, staff report, we note when um, the P Institutional Zoning District requirements were amended in 2013, I believe it was. I can look back to get a, a good number or a good date. And at that time, uh, city staff was starting to see a lot of requests from churches and schools and so forth for accessory storage buildings. So um, staff uh, crafted the ordinance to try and put a limit on the number of buildings and the size of the buildings. Now, almost 10 years later, um, we're to a point where the, the school and especially the high schools are are such large facilities um, and the the fields are used for so many different purposes staff does find that there is a compelling reason to grant the variance so I can walk through the the findings that we have in relation to the request so the property is guided INS institutional in the 2040 comp plan and P institutional in the zoning uh, the high school facility, its structures, its play fields, um, and the sixth uh, storage building are all consistent with that underlying land use designation. They all support the, the school and its activities. Uh, Apple Valley School property is 75.6 acres, and the school building is 360,100 square feet. So that's a, a large facility. Uh, the multi-purpose turf sports field was constructed and up upgraded. Um, again, these improvements were made at all four high schools um, to provide a safe and playable field surface. 
The proposed accessory storage building would primarily serve the new multi-purpose fields, which are over 900 feet from the existing field maintenance and sports equipment storage areas. So in, in trying to ratchet down the number of storage buildings, the thing that um, we may have overlooked at the time is just the efficiencies of being able to access a building adjacent to uh, the field area. So um, in this case, over 900 feet, um, and they go into some detail stored under the bleachers or stored in the showers. I, the, the school is cramped for storage, so this is, is really a need. Uh, detached storage buildings more efficiently and effectively store the equipment needed to maintain the fields. The artificial turf fields require special maintenance equipment, and I'll let you read about that. It's a, um, a dust and fluff, or vacuum and clean, a sweep and fluff kind of thing. And then FIAD classes are the primary and daily users of the artificial turf fields. The proposed increase in size, its location on the school campus, and proximity to adjacent properties will not adversely impact the character of the surrounding residential neighborhoods. And then last, this very long, um, it, basically the, um, the benefits outweigh um, any uh, potential impacts. And the fact of the matter is the school property is so large, we just don't see it as, as impacting any adjacent nearby uh, residential properties. So with that, Madam Chair, uh, staff is recommending um, holding the public hearing this evening, which you've already opened. And if the Planning Commission is comfortable, the Planning Commission's policy is to not take action on the night of the public hearing. However, this is a pretty simple, straightforward request. So if the Planning Commission would like to move forward, we've laid out um, actions two, three, and four, which would walk you through uh, the steps needed for those items. So, and with that, I could take questions if there are any. Thank you, Kathy. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Kathy? Commissioner um, Scanlon. Um, Madam Chair, Kathy, um, I'm, I was just curious, like with commercial properties, we have specific building materials requirements for next year. An institutional build such as this, is there any such requirements? Yes. Um, it says that it needs to be Oh, I can look it up. Compatible. Mm -hmm. Do we say? Okay. It Architecturally compatible. <clears throat> okay, so it's just a compatibility versus yes. a non um, um, fire, like uh, our commercial right. build uh, right. requirements are. That's right. okay. Yep. That's what I just wanted clarification on. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? There is a representative here from the school district if the Planning Commission has any questions of the school district. Commissioners, would you like to have him approached for questions or are you no questions? Okay. Uh, then we'll have the public. If anybody's here to speak, please come up to the podium, state your name and address if you have any concerns or questions. And I will close. If there are no further comments, I will close this public hearing. It is the policy of the Planning Commission not to act on an item on the same night as its public hearing. The Planning Commission will weigh all comments and information received tonight in its deliberation at future meetings. This item will continue to appear on future Planning Commission agendas until a recommendation on the petition can be forwarded to the City Council. But does anybody want to make a motion? Madam Chair. I recommend approval of a conditional use permit to allow construction of a 1,500 square foot accessory building at the Apple Valley High School subject to the conditions as noted in the draft resolution. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Scanlon and seconded by Commissioner Schindler. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries, Kathy. Madam, Madam Chair, may I just interject that um, for the next two items, there are revised resolutions <laughs> on your desktop this evening. 
It's just um, worked with the attorney's office to kind of refine the language a little bit. Thank you. Any motion? Madam Chair. I'm just, go ahead. I'll, go ahead. I'll move to recommend approval of a variance to increase the size of the accessory building from 1,400 square feet to 1,500 square feet with findings and conditions as noted in the draft resolution. Second. The motion was made by Commissioner Moholwald and seconded by Commissioner Sandal. Any questions? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. And I'll go, also go ahead to uh, make a motion to recommend approval of a variance to increase the number of allowed detached accessory buildings from two to six. Five currently exist on the site with the findings and uh, subject to the conditions as noted in the draft resolution. Second. Motion was made by Commissioner Maholwald, and I'm not sure, was it Scanlon? Seconded by Commissioner Scanlon. Any questions? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose, nay. Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to our next public hearing, which is for B, Eastview High School Turf Field Accessory Storage Building. We will now open the public hearing for Agenda 4B. The affidavit of publication for the notice of public hearing is available for inspection in the planning department. Everyone wishing to speak at this public hearing should be sure to fill out the attendance roster with their names and addresses so that accurate records can be maintained. We will begin the procedure with a brief presentation by city staff, followed by a presentation by the petitioner of the hearing. Upon the conclusion of the presentation, City staff will be asked to comment on the proposal's conformance with pertinent regulations and policies. After that, comments will be taken from the general public. Please come to the podium to speak and address all comments and questions to the chair. Kathy Bodner. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, now that you have the background in front of you, I will be able to kind of go quickly through the Eastview High School identical project, um, just in a different location and a couple of different facts. So they will be requesting a conditional use permit to construct a storage building that exceeds 750 square feet, and then they're requesting a variance to increase the size of the shed from 1,400 to 1,500. Eastview High School is located at 6200 140th Street West. It is also zone P institutional, so it's regulated by the same zoning restrictions as AVHS was. So same, same provisions. Um, in this case, this appears to be the first um, accessory storage building out on the site. So they don't need the second variance that AVHS needed. And this building would be um, it built um, uh, uh, by their stadium field, um, so southwest of the school and then southwest of the, the stadium field. And again, 30 by 50, same size. Again, 30 by 50. Uh, the property lines are kind of unique in this area because the property uh, abuts city property. There's kind of joint um, uh, property use between the, the two um, entities, uh, but all setbacks are met, so there's no issue with that. Floor plan, identical to the one you've seen. <coughs> Roll-up door, utility door. Uh, this one, the exterior is sporting some windows. Not sure if that will stay or not, but um, again, the same um, lap siding, gable, roof, and um, asphalt shingles. Again, the practical difficulties, we've been through that, and Eastview has exactly the same kind of situations. Um, so I'll, I'll not go through those. I think the, the Planning Commission has had a chance, hopefully, to review those ahead of time. But I'd be happy to, to take questions. So again, we're looking for 
holding the public hearing, and then if the commission is comfortable um, recommending approval of the conditional use and the variance, there's a revised resolution in front of you for that. And I can take questions if there are any. Thank you, Kathy. Commissioners, any questions for Kathy on East? Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Um, is there anybody from the public that would wish to speak? Please come up to the podium. Okay. If there are no further comments, I will close this public hearing. It is the policy of the Planning Commission not to act on an item on the same night as this public hearing. The Planning Commission will weigh all comments and information received tonight in its deliberations at future meetings. This item will continue to appear on future Planning Commission agendas until a recommendation on, or on the petition can be forwarded to City Council, unless commissioners would like to make a motion tonight. Madam Chair, I recommend <clears throat> approval of a conditional use permit to allow construction of a 1,500 square foot accessory storage building at Eastview High School, subject to the conditions as noted in the draft resolution. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Scanlon and seconded by Commissioner Schindler. Any comments or questions? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Madam Chair, I recommend approval to increase the maximum size of an accessory storage building of 1,400 square feet to 1,500 square feet. 100 square foot variance is hereby would be approved based on the findings uh, stated in the um, staff report in all applicable city codes and standards as outlined in the report. Second. That was a motion made by Commissioner Scanlon and seconded by Commissioner Schindler. Any questions? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, on to public hearing number three, 4C. We will now open the public hearing for agenda 4C. The affidavit of publication for the notice of public hearing is available for inspection in the planning department. Everyone wishing to speak at this public hearing should be sure to fill out the attendance roster with their names and addresses so that accurate records can be maintained. We will begin the procedure with a brief presentation by city staff, followed by a presentation by the petitioner of the hearing. Upon the conclusion of the presentation, city staff will be asked to comment on the proposal's conformance with pertinent regulations and policies. After that, comments will be taken from the general public. Please come to the podium to speak and address all comments and questions to the chair. Alex Sharp. Thank you, Chair Kurtz. As noted, this is a public hearing. Uh, it is not the policy of the P Planning Commission to act on an item the evening of its public hearing. However, if there are not concerns expressed by the Commission or members of the public due to the abridged timeline with uh, the City Council meeting June 8th and then not again until July 13th, we would seek to move this item forward. However, if there are concerns uh, from the Commission or from the public during the presentation, that is uh, not something that we would need to move forward, and we'd move forward at our next planning commission meeting. <clears throat> the proposed ordinance amendment only affects PD 646. It is outlined there in red. There's zone one and zone two in PD 646. As written, the proposed ordinance only is seeking to only affect zone two. All of zone two not properties were noticed and sent uh, information about the application. Just because I see it a little bit easier from the aerial photo side of things, wanted to make sure the uh, commission was aware of the area. It is bounded on the north by 147th, west on Galaxy, County Road 42 on the south, and Flagstaff on the east. There are seven properties within the zone, uh, and <clears throat> uh, these are the only properties would be affected by the proposed ordinance. Specifically, the applicant uh, Constellation Coffee is looking to amend this as they are seeking to occupy the former Eagle Valley Bank space at 14698 Galaxy Avenue. They would 
occupy and utilize the existing drive-through facility at that site. Rather than read through all of the ordinance, I'm going to highlight specific sections. Uh, in this instance, uh, this slide really is a cleanup of our existing ordinance. Uh, class one restaurant and class three restaurant are defined in our code or under the proper terms that should have been used within the plan development. This simply refers back to them. If you look at our existing code and looked at, say, a class three restaurant and its definition, it is an eating facility, including bagel shop, et cetera. So rather than have the text that follows and further defines, uh, it is more correct to have the actual defined term within our ordinance. Where it does actually affect uh, this ordinance is the no drive-through window services pr uh, provided. Um, that text would be stricken, other text would be moved up, and, and then a drive-through window service would be proposed as a permitted accessory use within the zone. This was actually done in the past for Krispy Kreme Donut, where they were what is now uh, the United Educators uh, facility used to be, um, I guess, a, a financial institution for, uh, uh, edu I'm sorry, I think it was United Educators, um, on the far eastern side of the site. And this ordinance was essentially an attempt to model after what was done for them back when Krispy Kreme came into town. Uh, the ordinance provision before this specifically allows bakeries with drive through So only a bakery right now would be allowed for a drive through and a bank. This would allow class three restaurants that neighborhood style. One other piece I wanted to highlight is that no more than four of these neighborhood type restaurants shall be allowed within the zone. That's existing within the ordinance. That is not a change the staff has put in at this time, but it will limit the number of drive throughs within that zone too. So those seven properties, there could still only be four drive throughs. This being the first, obviously, if approved. Um, in some of the haste to move through this quickly with the abridged timelines, we did fail to note that the Zone 2 only didn't copy that original text that I told you about with Krispy Kreme. So you have an amended text on your DS, and I've highlighted here in red with Zone 2 only. This is in the same style as if you look at uh, number 10 before it for the bakeries, where it specifically says drive up window in conjunction with the operation of a bakery, Zone 2 only. So that is the change. That is why uh, it was always intended that this would only affect zone two, not zone one. But at uh, the ordinance draft that went out with your packet would have allowed it within zone one. So I want to call that out as a special note. This is where we get in kind of the nuts and bolts of the permitted uh, accessory use. What staff attempted to do out of these following provisions was really get into, and it looks like I kind of skipped a couple of them, I apologize, um, really try to get into traditionally when we are evaluating a drive-through drive -through with a uh, neighborhood style restaurant, we're looking at it through the lens of the conditional use permit. That's where planning commission is used to reviewing these. How can we achieve that same level of review through a text amendment in a limited fashion for this zone and see how that works? Um, so what we've done is we've crafted language with uh, items such as the 13 vehicles of stacking, which is what we require with any conditional use permit for any drive through in town, uh, any coffee drive through in town. And then we specifically stated that since this site has uh, seven vehicles where it can easily stack within a dedicated drive through lane, that that shall not interfere with any parking, but that additional uh, six stalls can uh, interfere with those because they will be yes, less utilized. And the site has m ample parking for that, and I'll show that in future slides. The site plan would be reviewed and approved by the city engineer, which is essentially looking at the traffic concerns of the site and would be able to evaluate it uh, and approve or disapprove based upon concerns for stacking onto city streets. We've added a directional plan to ensure that as you are converting an exi existing site to a use that uh, previously wasn't designed for the site, that we have clear uh, site traversal for uh, the site user. And then the final item is that if you were adding a building addition for this drive through a site plan building permit authorization would still come before Planning Commission and City Council. That is a less than a conditional use permit, but now you are changing the facade and appearance of a building, which is when we do start to have additional concern. This is the site plan. I do want to note that north is to the left side of your screen. Um, 
as you can see, there are the seven vehicles here that are able to be stacked, and then we are working with the applicant. I believe what we'll sh do is be able to shadow in vehicles here, but with such a large site, it will not be difficult to be able to shadow in up to that 13. The applicant is present and can explain uh, a little bit more about the business model. You have their applicant narrative as well that will be able to go through some of the greater details. They have a presentation as well if you've got questions. Um, and with that, I would uh, open it or turn it back to the chair and see if the commission has questions of me. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Alex? If not, is it Liza who's coming up? I believe so. Hi, Liza. Hello, Madam Chair. Um, I am the owner of the building. Uh, my brother and I own the building together. Um, but I'm putting in the uh, coffee shop, Constellation Coffee. And I want to tell you just a little bit about my dream, if I can figure out the electronics for this. So we're calling it Constellation Coffee because it's on Galaxy Avenue. And we feel, my partner and I feel that when the stars align, anything can happen. So that whole idea, and you can move it next to, to the next stop, I'll tell you the dream of mine. Next slide, please. I'll let you do it. <laughs> if you didn't know, and I, most of you have not met my son, my son is on the autism spectrum. At two and a half, he was diagnosed with autism. And this is back in 2000. Um, it was the beginning of this kind of epidemic. Nobody kind of knew where this was going. Um, we sure didn't, and we were very nervous about his future. Um, through a lot of education and a lot of therapies and a lot of um, extra support, Maddie graduated um, from high school at, at St. Croix Lutheran High School in South St. Paul with honors, and he is in college. He just finished his sophomore year of college in Landmark College in Putney, Vermont, um, where he's studying broadcast, and he loves to do video editing things. One of the things that we thought about when we planned this coffee shop early on was my son's going to make it. He's going to be one of the lucky ones that has the support. Sorry. <laughs> that has the support. Many other individuals do not. In fact, 80 to 85 percent of all disabled and autistic kids are unemployed. Um, and that's not just here. Actually, Minnesota does quite a wonderful job in comparison to other states, but um, around the country, can you do the next slide, please? Around the country, there's up to one in four adults um, in the United States have some sort of disability that does not allow them to work, or because they're getting state aid, not a lot to work very much. So there's a lot of people that feel marginalized. Um, Minnesota, although... We have about 882,000 adults in Minnesota that have a disability. That's one in five or 20%. Most of these people are not gainfully employed, mostly because of fear, mostly because of um, having to make accommodations, or there just aren't jobs out there or employers that are willing, willing to offer jobs. Next slide. Um, you can see the gap between the first two or the second two, either one able-bodied individuals and disabled individuals, there's still a gap. And Minnesota does a much better job. But in the United States, it's still woefully low um, and a long way to meet that gap. Next slide. So what our goal here is, we're, our goal is to provide jobs for capable individuals with disabilities. And that could be physical disabilities, it could be neurodiverse disabilities, like autism or, I can't think of the word, whatever. Um, they're a little bit more hidden, right? Because you, you, you can tell when somebody's in a wheelchair. Sometimes you can't. Um, but our goal here is to employ the disabled and the neuro, um, neurodevelopmentally develop behind, whatever. Sorry, I'm just stumbling words. So we're creating opportunities here not only for jobs but to educate the people coming into um, the coffee shop and into apple valley because i think if you've ever been involved in special olympics or night to shine your first thought is you're astounded where are all these people we don't see them 
they're in group homes, they're in homes, they're not out and about, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't, but they're not in society like you and I are, um, running into each other and having a cup of coffee or whatever. So that's why we're starting this coffee shop, is to help with gainful employment. We hope that we're going to um, provide a good product. We're going with organic coffee. We're going with um, local um, milk products, organic syrups. Um, uh, we've got a local baker that is going to do home-baked goods. So it's very simple idea. It's not new. It's been done around the country. And my partner and I have actually gone to probably 10 different coffee shops around the country, talked to the owners, talked to individuals, the workers, and come up with hopefully the best ideas of how they proceeded forward. Um, go ahead. Next slide. So our intent is to provide job opportunities, as many as we can. And my goal here is, is to have their families, their um, friends come in. I've had many people tell me how much they want to support us. Um, and they, you know, I've got somebody that would work well there. I, I have a friend, or I've got a son, or I've got a daughter, or whatever. So we're very excited about um, the interest in it. Um, I was talking to an individual down in Sarasota who started um, a coffee shop down there called Rise and Nise. And he told me he has 300 applicants on a waiting list. So the need is totally there. Next slide. Um, what can Apple Valley do? Here's where it comes important. The zoning ordinance is calling it a drive through window. I'm calling it a courtesy window. Because we're not going to be a commercial coffee shop that has 20, 30 cars waiting to get to work in the morning. We're going to be a community shop. We want this to be a community coffee shop. We're doing um, special types of, of acoustics and flooring and things so that our, whether it's our workers or our customers that may be disabled or their families, they're not screeching. They're not, I mean, I can't do anything about coffee, the coffee maker, right? If there's a certain amount, you can't, but we're going to try to do as much to deaden noise and to, and to make it um, inviting. When you come into the coffee shop, I have an artist doing constellations on the ceiling. I have a wall that is going to have a three-dimensional moon that's backlit. I even have a resource center for books and um, therapies and things for parents and families that are looking for resources. Because when you get diagnosed, they tell you to go get some speech and occupational therapy and then send you on your way. And there are many, many other therapies out there. Some work better than others. But that's for everybody to kind of find out. So we're hoping that we're going to have a special resource center as well. Um, the vault that's left in the building um, that is not so easily removed. We're going from the bank. We're going to use that as a gathering for six or eight people so you could have a, I don't know, card group, um, you know, book club or something that they can, that can be private. Or even if you just need to be there quietly, it's very quiet because it's all concrete. So, um, next slide. Um, not only have we figured that there's a lot of disabled people that would like to support us, um, and they don't, they don't have the mobility all the time to come into the coffee shop. As much as the building is ADA accessible, doesn't necessarily mean it's a perfect situation. So we're trying to make it perfect for the families that are coming that might have disabled children, for the um, workers that are going to be there, and anybody that comes in the community. So that the courtesy window will truly be a courtesy for them to drive up and pick something up, knowing that um, disabled people are working there, um, and it's going to take a little longer probably for them to get it, get the coffee to them. But it doesn't mean that we're going to have lots and lots of cars to go through. People are going to catch on very quickly that that's not our model. Next. Catherine in Apple Valley. 
Actually, her husband's an engineer and has been before the Planning Commission many times. They have three children in a wheelchair. Can you imagine trying to navigate three children coming into a coffee shop just to support us? It's just not physically possible very often. Um, next slide. Um, this lady happens to be a classmate, um, her, his mother. She's in, she's in Walker now, and she's over in the assisted living. She has a driver, Piper, standing next to her. She'd love to be with us. In the summer, Piper can get her out in, into the building. She can't in the winter. It's just not physically possible for anybody of a certain age with disabilities. Next. Lastly, this is my nephew, Michael. He has twin babies, a three-year-old and a 12-year-old. And if you're taking the baby carriers, it's just not possible to get, you know, for a cup of coffee. Even if it's a dollar cup of coffee or five dollar cup of coffee, it's just not possible to take the whole brood in very easily. But they want to support us. So courtesy window would be a real gift. Go ahead. So I'm, I'm going to provide the jobs. And through all my discussions with the city for other zoning issues. The city wants uh, jobs. They want employment and gainful employment. And that's what I'm going to try to provide to my employees, to an underserved population. And what I'm asking is for some accessibility for my employees, for their families, and for people that want to support us. So we're asking for a courtesy window. Next. Because we're caring, hopefully. We're part of the community and we're capable. Everybody that works there is capable and they're worth having a job. So, any questions? Liza, I love the idea. Thank you for taking the time and the consideration of what we need to have done in our community. So I applaud you for that. Thank you. I think every one of us probably knows somebody that's disabled or has somebody in our family who's disabled. Um, my husband and I have a Down syndrome niece, and she's, God, I hate to say it, she's 47 already, but um, she does, she, and she lives in Detroit, Michigan, and she works for a place like this. And it gives her such a feeling of normalcy and bringing a value to the family. And um, I'm really happy to see our city having this opportunity, so thank you. Well, my I have, goal is just to make sure that as we get our feet on the ground, the more and more I can do, if it, even if it's somebody that can just put stickers on the cups, I'm going to try to do it. And so that's my goal and that's my commitment. I have a question about the window, the sure. courtesy window. Is that going to be, I don't know if there's such a thing as ADA compliant for the window. Would it be like come out and then lower or something for the individuals who are disabled in the car who can't highly reach a high window? Definitely going to look into this right now. If you, if, if if anybody's been over to the building, I have three drive-through lanes for the um, uh, for the bank. Bank. Mm -hmm. So I have to reconfigure part of the parking lot to get because why would you waste you know waste it and not have have good um, parking? It also has um, uh, fire. What do you call it? Bulletproof glass, right? So it's taken out a lot of the window. So if we don't do um, if we don't do the drive-through, we'll have to take, just recreate the window as it should have been in the first place, right? So that we can get light in. But um, because we're just at this point, at this point, should we be granted the window, we'll definitely be looking into doing it the proper way. Commissioners, any other questions for Liza? Commissioner Sandal. Madam Chair. Um, I don't really have any questions. I just wanted to echo that I think this is awesome that you're doing this. And um, I know a lot of people in the autism community, and it, it's awesome that you're doing this and providing the space for this. So thank you. Thank you. We're trying to, we're pairing up with Midwest Special Services, and they're going to help us send, send job coaches and stuff to help our staff as well, guide them. And, you know, so we're going we're gonna to do the best we can. Commissioner Scanlon. Madam Chair, um, echoing that what has already been said, but um, I'm very impressed with 
the all the background work that you've been putting in, you've put into this and uh, the, your thought and um, it's uh, very impressed to see what you've done the work you've done so far what is your timetable for anybody that's listening and to tonight uh, that your expectations are moving forward with things my timetable was kind of midsummer and then there was um, the plumbing permit that had to go to the state that was a month <laughs> that I wasn't aware of and then I was reapplying for SAC and WAC. That was another month. So um, we're hoping to get back on track after this. And, and once this kind of moves on, hopefully, we can solidify our plans. But we're probably looking fall, September maybe, um, October at the latest. I think our, our you know, lead times for certain um, products, we have a, a sliding glass window that will be going inside the building. And that takes about five months because it's custom. So, but we're going to see if we can do something besides it and still be open, you know, until we can get it. So, yeah. or use that as a training time. Okay. So, hopefully, September ish, October. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Liza. So, this is a, oh, do you have a question? Oh. <laughs> so this is a public hearing so is there anybody out in the audience that would wish to come up to the podium thank you please state your name and your address um, hi my name is Natalie Burgett and I live at 14342 Genesee Avenue um, I just wanted to um, I guess also thank Liza for this wonderful idea um, I not only have a sister with autism, but I also work as a board certified behavior analyst. So I work with families of um, people with autism and other developmental disabilities, anywhere from like ages two to 18. And so I see families every day that are, you know, struggling to teach their kids lots of skills. And a lot of kids and teenagers and now young adults have so many skills that just don't get to get used. And with something like this, it's so amazing just to see that we might actually be able to, you know, support these individuals that, like you said, want to be a part of their community and want to contribute. So um, I'm just really thankful and um, would love to see this as a part of our community. So, yeah. Thank you for coming up. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? My chair's on. There are no further comments. I will close this public hearing. It is the policy of the Planning Commission not to act on an item on the same night as its public hearing. The Planning Commission will weigh all comments and information received tonight in its deliberations at future meetings. This item will continue to appear on future Planning Commission agendas until a recommendation on the petition can be forwarded to City Council unless tonight anybody would like to make a motion. Madam Chair. I recommend approval of an ordinance amending Chapter 155, Appendix F, Article 24, Plan Development Number 6646, Zone 2, adding drive through window service in conjunction with a Class 3 restaurant as an accessory use. I second it. Motion made was by Commissioner Scanlon and seconded by Commissioner Kurtz. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We are down to the last public hearing. This is 4D, Higher Ground Daycare Conditional Use Permit and Site Plan Building Permit Authorization. We will now open the public hearing for Agenda 4D. The affidavit of publication for the notice of public hearing is available for inspection in the planning department. Everyone wishing to speak at this public hearing should be sure to fill out the attendance roster with their names and addresses so that accurate records can be maintained. We will begin this procedure with a brief presentation by city staff, followed by a presentation by the petitioner of the hearing. Upon the conclusion of the pr presentation, City staff will be asked to comment on the proposal's conformance with pertinent regulations and policies. After that, comments will be taken from the general public. 
Please come to the podium to speak and address all comments and questions to the chair. I should have this memorized by now. And it is Alex Sharp. Thank you, Chair. Yes, we don't normally have this many public hearings. Uh, as stated, this is a public hearing that uh, it is not the policy of the Planning Commission to act on an item the evening of its public hearing. This is one of your more traditional applications that we see. It's a lighter version of it because it's an existing building. But uh, at this point, unless the commission uh, seeks to, staff is not seeking a recommendation this evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. The site is uh, located at 14605 Glacier Avenue. It is on the east side of Cedar. You will be very familiar with the site because back in 2019, a subdivision separated the site from the site to the, the south, which is Hardeen. It is a 0.95 acre site. It is zone limited business. Within the limited business zone, daycares are a conditional use. Conditional uses are those that are generally permitted by the zoning ordinance, however, may have conditions added to them to mitigate any potential negative impacts to surrounding properties. Uh, I've got my big starred note. Uh, there is, or there are single family homes immediately adjacent to this site. Uh, at the public hearing for Hardeen in the subdivision, Traffic did come up as a concern. Uh, our city engineer has reviewed that, and um, as additional comments and questions come up, I'll be sure to refer to uh, them if there are. They also included brief items in their staff memo. The site plan doesn't amend uh, the site significantly. Um, I'm sorry that it is washing out pretty bad on that eastern side. I'll flip to the landscape plan for some pieces here because it's a little bit easier to see. but. To highlight, there are three playgrounds planned on the site, uh, the largest of which is proposed on the northern side. Uh, with that northern side, it does not have the screening of the building like the playgrounds on the south and western side will, will have, and so there may be concerns from neighbors about potential noise impacts of that playground. Uh, they may be off peak hours, so it may not be a concern, but staff did want to note it. Uh, there is also a proposed fence surrounding the property line. That is the X uh, mark here. We are looking for some additional details on the material of that fencing that were not provided as of yet, and whether there will be opaque sections or whether this is more of the aluminum uh, wrought iron look that we see at other daycares, because sometimes you do want to have that appearance um, in and out from the site. Uh, the small addition, uh, we don't have a direct square footage. Staff has estimated that it's around 550 square feet. It is located on the front section of the building. It is essentially filling in an area where the building uh, originally undulated. It is only for the first story, uh, so it is not a significant addition. However, that's why you're getting a site plan building permit authorization, as it is changing the primary, primary facade facing residential. You'll see some additional renderings later. I'm actually going to flip to the landscape plan because it allows you to see things a little bit easier for this next part. One of the potential conditions that staff is proposing is a wayfinding signage plan and potentially a condition about drop-offs. We actually believe that because of the dual entrance to the site uh, being existing, there is a benefit to requiring that drop-offs and pickups occur from the northern side. Drop-offs are able to occur here and then there's clear exit. We are not suggesting to amend the current parking lot configuration uh, as it does not relate to the uh, use as a daycare. Flip back. Uh, one of the items that staff is requiring out of this is that the building be sprinkled. Uh, with the change of use, it needs a sprinkler system um, in order to be compliant with the building code. This was put in to the memos of the city engineer, building official, and fire marshal. Uh, right now, we have not been able to evaluate whether the existing water lines will be sufficient, but there are ample utilities in the area, both on the Cedar side and potentially on the Glacier side, should a new line need to be pulled in for that. Hopefully, that will not be necessary and the existing service can suffice. <clears throat> the landscape plan uh, will largely utilize the existing vegetation and then the vegetation that is proposed will likely be above and beyond what code requires. So as the commission is well aware, two and a half percent of the means construction cost of the building is required uh, to go towards landscaping. However, in this case, uh, it only applies to the addition. And since that addition is relatively limited in size, the landscaping 
two and a half percent is not going to be a significant factor, and they've likely well exceeded it by what they have shown. We do have a couple suggestions uh, that will be put in to the conditions of the conditional use permit. Uh, the Natural Resources Coordinator noted that we should evaluate some of the existing species and ensure that they are not invasive species or uh, scrub trees, that we should diversify some of the plantings that are proposed um, as they do not meet the diversity rules that are set out in ordinance to prevent things like emerald ash borer from coming to town and really devastating a single site. And then, actually those, that final, that piece up, my third note was the two and a half construction piece. The interior site plans can be difficult for you to see uh, at this scale, however it is included in your packet as well. Uh, essentially I'm going through this uh, to show that parking is more than met on the site. Uh, with the hour of evaluation, we found that more than double the parking was already existing, so the couple of stalls, three stalls that are being removed for the trash enclosure are uh, not a concern. I do want to actually flip back, apologies. In this area here, a trash area is noted on the site plan. Staff is looking for additional details on what that will be constructed with. Are there walls prepared? Um, code does require that the trash uh, enclosure be constructed of similar materials to the building. You'll see that even with Quick Trip uh, just up the way from this location. So we will be seeking some additional details. These are the final things that come forward for Planning Commission at a future date. First, or the second floor plan is largely uh, the larger classrooms, but will utilize the entire space. The building facade, you can see that addition uh, best on the east elevation, and it'll be here with a similar roof to what is existing. They are proposing to use uh, similar material, if not the exact same material, as the existing brick facade. I mean, just for reference, <laughs> Uh, for those who haven't driven by the building recently, uh, there is a street image of the structure and the addition will be in this location here. So this is the elevator bay in this location and then here is where the addition and new roof area will be installed. I believe the applicant is present this evening. Uh, if the commission has any direct questions of them, otherwise I turn it back to the chair. Thank you, Alex. Commissioners, questions for Alex. This is right across from Quick Trip, right? Or I mean, it's down. There's a dental office, and then is that where it is? Yes, the second one, that right? Is correct. Is there another daycare? Am I getting confused? Is there another daycare that's similar close by it? So I'm thinking. Of, this is where I was referring to yes. uh, Chair Kurtz. In 2019, this site originally encompassed this entire area. Yes. This is Hardeen Daycare that was developed at the time of that subdivision. The, the commission reviewed in 2019. They are directly adjacent to one another. They're zoned the exact same. Uh, the ordinance does not have a limitation on the number of daycares within the limited business zone because the limited business zone affects a large scale of the city. Uh, the city does not have any regulations about permitted uses being directly next to one another. I guess my point is, is the engineers here, right? The city engineer, hi. Um, we haven't had any complaints with the residents in back of there with uh, noise or anything, and now if we're putting another daycare, would it exacerbate the noise level or anything? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, for noise level, um, we haven't had any complaints. Um, in fact, um, everything that I've heard from the city engineer and the, the others in the engineering department is that um, the Hardeen daycare is functioning um, better than the residents originally anticipated. And then I'll just add that with this proposed site, um, there's more available parking. Uh, and um, in reading their, uh, the, the memo that the developer supplied, there's a proposed uh, drop-off pattern that we believe in engineering will be uh, more than sufficient to mitigate any sort of concerns of that matter. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Scanlon. I think basically my questions were just answered here, but I, my only what I was concerned about is the added traffic within the um, residential area, and it seems like that so far with the existing um, daycare that that's been working out well, 
and or less than what was expected. So, um, yes, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, the uh, the anticipated traffic um, is not a concern at this time. Uh, the added traffic, anyway. Um, there was a building there. Um, it's had vacant for a while now, several years, I guess. Um, but any traffic that is generated by this site um, is something that was sort of already planned for uh, when the first building was here. Okay, thank you. I like to see an existing building being used, so that's good. What was there prior to prior? Chairkurt's an orthodontist was located there previously. Okay. Um, okay. With it being a two-story orthodontist, would have actually had a pretty high traffic load. Any other questions, commissioners? If I brought the applicant up, would anybody have any questions for her? I guess none at this time. Looks good. Okay, so anybody from the public here wish to come up? Absolutely. Oh, okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Come on up. I'll go quicker. Um, just to not run through too much time because he's presented a lot of what right. we would. So, if you want to go through, so my name is Chris Horney. I work for Murphy Development Group based out of Chicago, working on behalf of and with Higher Ground Education. Uh, they're a national daycare tenant that we work with. They have a brand called Guidepost Montessori. Uh, there's 120 schools they have across the country. We built 20 plus of them now with them. Uh, we're based out of Chicago, but kind of follow them where they want to go. Uh, we're actually working, getting ready to start uh, projects in Egan and White Bear Lake uh, in the next couple months as well. This one, uh, if we're approved, would be the third in Minneapolis uh, with them. So they want to, once they enter into a market, they like to find, you know, cities like this um, where kind of it, it appears that there's a daycare need. And to answer one of the questions, it's pretty common. It's a little bit of like CVS Walgreens. Mm -hmm. It's pretty common that we are nearby or next to a daycare, like pretty common. I would say 30 to 50% of our schools are within a quarter mile of another, uh, another daycare. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, I'll, I will flip through. Um, so that's who I am. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the tenant. It's a, they're based out of California, but they're nationwide. If you keep, keep flipping. Um, next, next. Uh, he kind of already went through the site. We talked a little bit about that. Keep, keep going. Um, so I'll, st I'll stop here for a second. Um, the school is a two-story school. It's a 755-foot addition. Um, it would be seven classrooms in total with, uh, you know, when it's fully stabilized in year two or three, that'd be roughly 138 children. That's, those are all maximum capacity based on uh, the state of Minnesota's licensing procedures. These are, daycare's a highly regulated business that has to follow a lot of different guidelines. Um, at any one time, we could have up to 22 employees on site. Uh, and we talked about, there is 44 parking spaces remaining your zoning requires 30. Um, I'll, I'll talk through the traffic in a second, but we're overparked for a school of this size. Typically, we'd have in the 30s, uh, but we're not going to just get rid of existing parking, obviously. Um, so uh, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. There's no evening. There's no after-school things. Um, the actual classroom is... It is a daycare, so there's zero to six, um, but the actual classroom sort of time is from 8.30 to 3. Um, and so 7 to 8.30 is kind of before care, and 3 to 6 is after care, if you will. Um, but there's no set defined time. Unlike an elementary school, parents can drop off, and we'll talk through that in a second, um, about our traffic patterns. Um, with 120 schools and the fact that you have to badge in and badge out your kid, We've got really, really good data on what our traffic patterns are. Um, and so we can share that with you in a second. So next, We've kind of already talked about that. One thing to note is we do have two, you know, an entrance and an exit. Um, we're open to a suggestion. He hadn't mentioned that before, but we're open to 
having a one in one out kind of a pattern that's it's actually more common in a lot of the schools just by the way the parking lot lays out um, and happy to do that if that's that's a recommendation um, so if you go to the next slide um, and next slide so next sorry we kind of <laughs> I didn't know what he was presenting next <laughs> he's um, thorough yep <laughs> um, keep going okay this is a uh, sometimes people ask about signage what the signage would look like um, this is the type of sign that we would put up. You would go along uh, and replace where uh, <coughs> the sign, it's on cedar, you know, facing cedar, that, which is kind of the back of the building. Uh, and we'd work with the planning and zoning to make sure that it was set back correctly and met the regulations and guidelines. But this is the kind of typical sign. Um, next. Um, to answer your question about uh, fencing, so most of the fencing is fairly similar because it's regulated by uh, licensing. Um, and so there's certain spacing and height. Um, our preference is to have the you know four to six foot uh, black aluminum picket fence, but we do have schools that are nearby residential spaces. So to the extent that it's a condition that we would need it to be you know, site proof, we have plenty of examples where we've done that um, to ensure that we don't want to. We want. We want to be good neighbors, right? Like, it, we view ourselves as a community benefit. Like, we want to be a part of the neighborhood and aren't trying to do something to, you know, make the neighbors uh, upset about us being there. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, okay. So this is the traffic pattern. So basically, this is split up um, in 15-minute interval intervals, and I did it in percentages because it's better to kind of go between schools. But basically, this is over, a, um, I think it's a one or two month period uh, of every day, this is the average. And basically what you see is at any 15 minute interval, and the average pickup drop off is eight to 10 minutes. Um, because again, you have under six year old kids, you don't just, it's not elementary school, open the door, drop them off, it's pull in depending how small your child is, you know, carry them in the, you know, the car seat or, you know, walk them in, hold their hand. You've got to check them into your classroom, you know, swipe in, swipe out. Um, there's a whole procedure for that. So it's not a minute. I wish it was sometimes, um, but it's, uh, you know, eight. And so 16% of the 138 kids is the most we anticipate having at any one time. Um, and within our parking, that's 22. So that would take up half um, of, the, of the lot from parents. Um, and that's just at the peak times in the morning. Um, and as you see, it's really spread out over, over a two to three hour period in the morning just because people have different, going in at different times. And the, the afternoon and evening period is, is even more spread out because people get off at different times. Um, and so we, it's even less than that. Um, so. I don't know if we had formally shared that with you, but that this is a very common, this is a suburban school um, average of what we, what we typically see. So uh, if you can go to the next slide, um, you can, this is helpful if we're building a new, but you can kind of see, um, again, we would do everything, the, the brick, the addition of the brick would just be as close as we could to actually match it, the buildings, 25 to 30 years old now. Um, so we'll do, we'll find the best brick match we can. Um, to answer your other question, we would uh, just build a, typically a masonry enclosure. It's hard to see in this one, but basically we use the masonry that is either on the building or in this case it would be the brick on the sides and then just a, uh, a, a wood fence you know, door um, for the trash enclosure. So that's typical on all our schools. Uh, if you can go one more. We should have, uh, so all the playgrounds are this cedar look, uh, and then we do have shade structures uh, that are over them. Um, if you want to go one more, and then after that, it's just, it's, I think we've all seen typical uh, daycare stuff. So happy to answer more questions to the extent you have any. I uh, don't want to take any more time than you have, but um, happy to do so. Questions or comments for the applicant? Uh, most of these look like they're one level. So with this one being a double or a 
yeah. tool level. Is that an issue for? No, we actually, so it, it often happens in existing schools. Like uh, we have one in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, the White Bear one is actually a, a, a two-story building Sorry. as well. Um, and, and frankly, a, a good use for us is actually a lot of times old medical office or, or dental, primarily because they're heavily plumbed. Um, and, and, you know, these rooms, the, the schools are basically just big empty rooms of bathrooms, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you need a lot of plumbing to, and so it's a good, it's a good um, candidate to, because we like to use existing buildings as well. Frankly, it's, it's a more efficient way to do it. It's a little faster. Um, and oftentimes it's something like this where it's a little over parked for us. So like we don't get into the, well, is the site big enough for, you know, the playgrounds and all this. So um, this is a perfect candidate. Uh, you know, of course, there is an, an uh, there's already an existing elevator that's operating. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we would have had to, there are times where we have to put one in. Um, but in this case, that's already there. Right. So, um, okay. yeah. Well, thank you for your presentation. Sure, sure, sure thing. Anybody else? No? Okay, thank you. And again, this is a public hearing. Ma'am, if you wanted to come and approach the podium, please state your name and address. Hi, Arlette Gaona uh, from 14615 Glacier Avenue. Mm -hmm. So we're at the Baker next door. Mm -hmm. And I, I know you mentioned about the traffic, and I am concerned about the traffic. Uh, families and staff sometimes mention that it can take up to five minutes to turn on 145 to get into Glacier. Uh, so I just wonder that with basically double the families that we have, if it's going to take double the time or if there is a plan to manage that. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, sometimes it can take up to five minutes to turn uh, in that light. And I know uh, you mentioned that it's a common thing to have daycares very close. I personally haven't seen that. And just out of honest curiosity, I just wonder why right, right next door to, mm -hmm. to an existing daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. That's it. Okay, we'll address that at our next meeting. Or can you answer that now for traffic? Do have you, or would you like to have time to? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, we requested a, a little bit of additional information. Sure. In the daycare, and we'd like the time to Absolutely. complete our study for traffic. That's what I figured, so we will get back to you. On thank that. you. Okay, thank you. Just. Uh, Commissioner Mahawald? Just one question. Um, how many um, students, children do you have at your facility? What's your, what's your license capacity? Oh, sorry. 115. 115? Okay. Thank you. Yes. And we're Spanish immersion. Uh, I don't know if makes a difference. I don't, you're not Spanish. No, no, it's a Montessori, which is a different teaching style. Um, okay. And I mean, we're happy the building is been in use. It has been empty for a while, but just curious. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir, come on up. State your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Paul Burgett. I live at 14342 Genesee Avenue. And I just feel like my comment might be useful because I do see that intersection. And so I can attest to her statement that there is sometimes traffic backed up at that light because of the nature of the traffic flow on Cedar Avenue and 145th where you're correct, there's a quick trip there. That left turn specifically does not get a lot of um, right of way. And so that may be an issue to address. It's not saying, but I've witnessed that and I can attest to what she's saying and not saying that's a bad idea to have another daycare there, but it would be a great consideration to consider traffic flow because, as we all know, Cedar Avenue is very busy. Okay. So that's the only thing. Appreciate your comment. Yes, we will look into that. Anybody else? There are no further comments. I will close this public hearing. It is the policy of the Planning Commission not to act on an item on the same night as the public hearing. The Planning Commission will weigh all comments and information received tonight in its deliberations at future meetings. This item will continue to appear on future Planning Commission agendas until a recommendation on the petition can be forwarded to the City Council. Thank you, everyone.
Okay, that brings us to number five, land use action items. Uh, we have a Burgett Backyard Shed Variance, and that will be presented by Kathy Bodmer, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> We've had a good number of lessons on variances tonight. We <laughs> <laughs> won't have to go too, too slowly through this. Um, so the application <clears throat> that was received was from Paul Burgett, uh, resides at 14342 Genesee Avenue. Um, he submitted an application requesting a variance to be able to increase the height of an accessory storage building from 16 feet to 18 feet to provide additional functional storage. Um, the home is located at 14342 Genesee Avenue. And the property up oh, and this is kind of an area map showing um, the, the surrounding property, so the subject property. And the zoning on the property is R3, single family residential, minimum lot size 11,000 square feet. In the city uh, code, the zoning chapter, section 155332, uh, limits the height of an uh, accessory storage building to 16 feet and 750 square feet in area. Information is not available um, for how that height uh, figure came about. It's, it's been on the books for um, as long as I've been with the city and probably a good number of years before that. What we suspect is that um, a calculation was made of a typical roof height um, that could accommodate a 750 square foot building. So kind of in keeping with kind of a standard accessory building. So this is a copy of the lot survey. The lot is 17,351 square feet. And the building is proposed then to be located um, in the rear yard six feet from the side property line and then 12 feet from the closest point of the rear property line. The, uh, the, property, the rear property line can'ts a little bit so the shed is aligned more with the alignment of the home. So that's why there's the difference there. Uh, the floor plan shows the main floor, uh, the extent of the pad area and it shows the, the extent of the pad and then a, an extension for uh, the overhead garage door, the access to the, the building. Since the roof line overhangs more than 24 inches on one of the sides, uh, the city staff will use the size of the roof um, for the dimension of the, um, of the building. So um, in, in total, it's uh, 21 by 30. I'm sorry, that's not true. It's 24 by 30. 24 by 30 is the roof line. Um, so the 720 square feet total. Uh, the next slide is the second floor, the, the storage loft, um, which would be 10 feet by 26 feet or 260 square feet. Uh, the roof uh, framing, this is difficult to see, but it's the, the 24 by 30 that we've been discussing. Uh, the east view in elevation interior, I'm sorry, it's difficult to see on the screen. Hopefully it's better in your packet. Um, but what it's showing is how the, um, the building is set up with kind of the two stories. So the, the main um, storage level and then the um, upper storage loft. And then kind of a cross section through the building. Um, in the staff report, I note that the, the building kind of has offset roof peaks. It's, it's um, a, a kind of a popular design for gardening enthusiasts, so um, love to see the, the variety there. Um, but the, um, in order to get the clearance that's needed to have a minimum six foot high 
uh, wall in that upper loft means that the height of the roof pitch has to go up to 18 feet. And then uh, you can see the stairs going up to the upper loft area. So exterior elevation, um, the, the way the roof um, alignment is set up allows for skylight lights up top. Um, and then the, the roof overhang um, on posts uh, for the, the exterior. So practical difficulties, I won't belabor this because we spent quite a bit of time on another, the other applications. But again, uh, property owner uh, proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner not permitted by the zoning code, circumstances unique to the property, the variance, if granted, will not alter the essential character of the locality. Economic considerations alone do not constitute practical difficulties. And again, the factors, uh, special conditions do not result from the action of the owner applicant, uh, not contrary to the intent of the chapter. It's not a, it, it, to serve as a convenience, but is necessary to alleviate a practical difficulty. So staff, in its review, um, struggled with this a little bit. And the difficulty is that um, staff did not find that there's anything unique about the property that would necessitate the um, two-foot variance. The difficulty is that the design of the building is being set up such that there's a main floor and an upper story, and the, the um, petitioner really wants that six-foot minimum clearance so that he has more headroom on that upper story. The concern is that um, the, the, the zoning code and um, accessory storage buildings, that provision was not set up thinking of two-story buildings. So that's, that's kind of where staff is, is struggling a little bit with this. Uh, a two-story building um, is, is quite um, a different kind of situation or um, request. Um, so I, I, the petitioner is here and will want to kind of share his side of the story. Um, but from staff standpoint, we review variance applications ba based strictly on the requirements of state statutes and city code. Um, and, and based on that, we don't believe that the case is made for um, the practical difficulty. Um, so there's, there would be options. The, the petitioner is, is drawing the plans himself, so he's doing the design, um, which is cool. But what it means is it, it, it may be that, that it would be best to work within the 16-foot parameters and then just kind of figure out a way to, to make it work. So with that, Madam Chair, we are recommending denial uh, this evening with the petitioner's opportunity to uh, make his own case. Um, and if the Planning Commission concurs with that, they should make a motion to that effect. If the Planning Commission wishes to recommend approval, it should state its findings and any practical difficulties in a motion to approve the variance. And with that, I could take any questions if there are any. Thanks, Kathy. Um, I can honestly say I wish I saw a photo Oh, you have one? Okay. I wish there would have been a photo before so we could have. Yeah. It, it, the, the petitioner will, when he gets up, will say that it was inspired by a neighbor's okay. shed. Okay. Any questions for Kathy? Anyone? Commissioner Mahowald? Madam Chair, just a quick question. In terms of the height of the building, is it the height from, from the, the top of the building to the grade? Um, the slab, or if the if the, if the building were on an incline, or like built somewhat into the incline of of the um, would it be to the to the side grade? That's a good question. And so the definition of grade is an average. 
So we would take it from the average. Um, we kind of explored that a little bit with the petitioner to see if there might be a way to kind of tuck it into the hill a little bit, um, which would take additional kind of reinforcement and, and work. Um, and the, the slope of the rear yard kind of goes down and then comes up a little bit. So it, it, there isn't a real easy way to, to tuck it into the hill. Okay, thanks, Kathy. That, that was, it's, it's, it is, it's an interesting looking design. I, I, I like that with the, the skylights and things like that. Um, but it's the, as you pointed out, that second condition for practical difficulty is a tough one. But if it, if it were built lower, two feet lower, yes, sure. then, it, then, it, then it could be built to, to <clears throat> I guess, if you're <laughs> putting it into the ground, but you're adding, I'm sure, cost and yes. things like that. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. Thank you. Commissioner Schindler? <clears throat> Madam Chair, Kathy, um, can you go back to that uh, aerial view? Aerial view. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's in that rear section. Yep. They're going to need to be trees removed. Um, I will defer to the petitioner. I don't believe so. Um, this picture may be dated. I know he was, when we met on site, he was talking about having to remove some trees, um, but that might have been. I don't know. I'll let him answer that. I'm just kind of wondering what kind of screening, if, if it's in the middle of trees, it might have some, there might be some screening of it from other properties. I was just curious about that. Sure. Anyone else? Okay. Thanks, Kathy. Okay. Um, Mr. Burgett, come on up. And Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel a little bit behind the eight ball. I didn't know I could present an awesome PowerPoint for you guys. Otherwise, I for sure would have made. Um, <laughs> but being proactive, um, I did take pictures. And um, I have copies, unfortunately. I don't. Can you put that right underneath? The, yes, you can. Yeah, you, you put it right underneath and the Kathy, we show people Kathy at home can see and everything. Kathy will help you. Oh, OK. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Under here. Ooh, OK, great. There you go. Okay, great. And the guys downstairs will help with the zooming in. And so great. So we'll just do this like a PowerPoint, guys. This is going to be <laughs> there one there you go. right here. We'll start here. And then we'll just move to two and so on and so forth. And I'll actually take another copy to, to narrate. So, but we'll leave it right up on this picture, guys. And um, let's start um, by telling you a little bit about us and how we got to this place right here. Um, Natalie and I um, met the love of my life in 2020, and we were married in 2021. And we had a choice right then to either sell my home in Hopkins, um, where I have a son who attends high school, or to move out uh, to sell Natalie's home and move to Hopkins, one or the other. And Natalie, as she described, her, her sister has autism, lives a few blocks away with her parents, um, and Natalie is a caretaker. Um, and that was a big part that weighed in our decision to move out to Apple Valley. And once we moved out to Apple Valley, actually shortly after we were married. Stayed in Apple Valley. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and why well, moved to you stayed. Yeah. Uh, in 2021, I was seriously injured uh, at work um, and was unable to do anything for about a year. Um, and so that kind of delayed everything, and it actually allowed some other things to progress, um, which has brought us to the place we're at today, which is why we need this additional space. Now, I did hear uh, Planner Bodmer refer to a specific need that was stated for the high schools, said they're being squeezed for storage. They don't have any. Well, we are too. Um, our home was damaged by water significantly to the point where mold started. Natalie had to move out. She had to leave. She still, to this day, has been testing herself for mold, has mold sensitivities. That has basically negated our ability to store things in the basement. We actually um, 
in the past year, we had more water damage to our home that resulted in thousands of dollars of damage and black mold that had to be removed from our basement. And we have currently um, approximately thirty to forty thousand dollar project on our docket, whereby a company has to come in and do water mitigation around our home. Um, so we have some just it's unique to our circumstance, and I think that's uh, I think that's relevant because um, in order to grant variance, the city considers the following factor to determine whether the applicant has established their practical difficulties. Well, the first thing is special conditions apply to the structure or land in question that are particular to the property and do not generally apply to other land or structures in the district. Well, we have that. We don't have any storage space, um, and we're, we're really being squeezed for that. Um, and as far as number two, the granting of the proposed variance will not be contrary to the intent of the chapter, I would say that this isn't. I would, I would um, contest that this is a two-story structure. It's a one-story structure that has a mezzanine level on it. There's, it has access, just like a lot of stories, if you have an attic in your house, you don't consider that you know, a three-story house. It's, it's got an attic, and so we have a mezzanine space. And the purpose of that also comes into one of our practical difficulties is this space is going to be used for, um, it'll be used for the uh, storage of not only like lawnmowers and, and snowblowers and stuff like that, but also for some of our dry goods. And because she has mold sensitivities, I think we're all cognizant of the fact that things that are stored on grade um, have, are susceptible to moisture. Um, it's even in the building code that you have to use green treated lumber on the ground. You have to use uh, contact setoffs. You have to use uh, brick courses that keep wood products off the ground. So that's kind of an established standard. That's why we're going toward this. And then that leads us to um, that the granting, uh, the special conditions don't result from the actions of the owner or applicant. We didn't do anything to create the circumstances that give us basically no storage in our split level home in Apple Valley. Um, and that the granting of this variance will not merely serve as a convenience. Um, Planner Bodmer said that it is a convenience to me. It's absolutely not. I looked up um, NIOSH, OSHA, and University of North Carolina Chapel Hill standards and explanations on use when handling manual material handling. NIOSH states that avoiding bending and twisting, it's in ergonomic guidelines for manual material handling printed in 2007, is one of the prime things you can do to avoid getting hurt. So if the roof line goes down to um, three and a half feet, which is where it would be, at the top of the stairs, should 16 feet be left uh, as it is, then um, I would be doing some bending and twisting, or Natalie would, when we're trying to put our clothing upstairs in summer, winter changeovers. And that's dangerous, according to NIOSH. OSHA also says that solutions to control ergonomic hazards say we should enable neutral postures. And the UNC, I think everyone knows that it's not a good idea to bend while you're carrying something and twist. Um, the uh, last thing I'll really say on it um, about that is that I have I have tried I started out filing a building permit on this at the end of April I tried to refine it I tried to massage it I thought about the grant uh, Planner Bodmer didn't mention that when she came out to visit I had set up a grade line to account in for setting it into the ground as much as I possibly could. There's, you could go out there right now. I've got a chalk line and a string line level. I'm, I'm, I'm accounting for everything. I'm trying to do everything I can not to pay $183 and I have to stand before you guys. But this is where we're at. Is, you mean the roof line you were talking about? Yeah, I tried to do the roof line. You can go, you can change the pitch of the roof line, but at a certain point, it needs to become a rubber roof, an EPDM rubber roof. Um, so that because it becomes too flat, so I tried to do that. We want to have something beautiful for our neighbors to look at that looks like another building in the neighborhood. So now we'll go on to these pictures. Um, so you can see right here, um, this is where the roof line would be at 18 feet. Our land slopes down right there, and the neighbor's shed, even with the two-foot variance, directly behind us, the neighbor's shed is going to be higher. Um, even with the variance, it would be lower than the neighbor's shed at 14349. There is a view to, to the north, that's a wide angle. And then here, 
is a view from the shed location. This shed is actually modeled after my neighbor Dorothy's shed, which is um, pointed to in the arrow, and again, it's kind of hard to see in this picture, but it's a beautiful shed. It looks kind of like a little house. It doesn't look like a shed. It has, a, it has similar siding and a shingled, uh, asphalt shingle roof. Um, and additionally, I know that the base of the shed with the arrow over it is about 12 feet above grade where my shed will be located. Um, you, um, all the land in the area slopes down. And if you look to the south, in the other direction, so that's to the north, it slopes up. If you look where it slopes down to the south, it's all trees. There's no houses down there. Um, the houses are actually up here on a hill. Everything's up on a hill. This is another view of that shed in my neighbor behind me, and here's the tree that I measured off of. Um, I, I hope you guys can see that I've done a lot to try and do this within the 16 feet, and I'm not, I'm having, I had a really hard time, it was basically impossible. I also know that the shed up here at 14379 Garrett Avenue, this is southeast from the proposed location, is going to be much higher than the current shed that I'd like to build. And to the west, all the houses are on a higher plane. I did speak with these neighbors, they are happy to support what we're doing. Um, my other neighbors to the south all support, also support it. Um, as do the neighbors to the east I've talked to. Um, a comment was made in some of the documents that I saw that I needed to obtain a survey. I did obtain a survey last year. I had that surveyor mark out the lot lines, and those are clearly visible. They were visible at the time of Planner Bodner's visit. Um, so you can see the lot lines are clearly marked, and I've done my due diligence. I've actually uh, planning to build the shed back seven feet, um, but it's neither here nor there, but it's going to be definitely within uh, the scope of all the other parameters. Um, I used a tape measure to measure how high it would be. Point out that it'll be aesthetically pleasing. We have a nice backyard. We want to keep it that way. We want it to be beautiful. This is what it would look like from the front right here, you would see a little bit of a structure right there. So there's a great picture for you. This is a shed half a block away from us. That's a tall shed. And I would submit to you, this could be part of the reason why the shed variance or the uh, accessory building is 16 feet, because people have tall stuff to store. That's part of the reason why I configured my design as it is. I have tall stuff, uh, certain like woodworking tools and such. Uh, I showed another tall shed that's, um, this is actually above the roof line of the home. It's not over 16 feet, but you can see that depending on the lay of the land in this neighborhood, sheds can be up or down. And the part of the reason why I feel fit to ask for the extra two feet is because our land is down low. No one is going to notice or care. No one's going to notice there's a two foot difference. They're going to see it's lower than everything else. And so this is, a, this is what I believe is a practical need for us. And um, it's not uh, specifically about uh, finances. I see that uh, number four in the definitions of practical difficulties um, is not alone constituted by uh, economic considerations. But there are economic considerations. We're paying $4,000 a year in storage right now. And because of that delay, we've paid thousands and thousands of dollars on top of the repairs we've had to make for the water damage. Um, it's, it's hurting us. Um, this is hurting your neighbor, and we would like to add two feet, and it's not going to hurt anyone, and it's going to help us be able to store our goods. So, you have anything? Um, yeah, I think um, I just feel like it's something reasonable to ask, and so I would just ask that you would consider um, accepting the variance because I think and my husband um, is has done lots of different things. He's, I'm super lucky to have such a husband that's so handy and can do all these things. So I'm really thankful that um, we have the opportunity to do this. Um, before I was married, I didn't have that option on my property. So um, I'm, I'm really hoping that we can um, 
be able to finally merge our lives together and, you know, live married life without all these extra considerations and having to drive to storage and pick stuff up and move stuff. We still have a lot of my stuff that was mold damaged that I have to go through and decide whether to keep or get rid of. And it'd just be really nice to have a space where we can put stuff up high and just, I can go in there. I also have neck and back issues. Um, and so it'd be nice for me to be able to go in there and get stuff independently if he's not available to do that. So I just feel like it's, it's a reasonable ask and I would just ask that you guys consider. Thank yeah, I, th I think this this would be what we would feel constitutes a reasonable manner to use our property. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you so much. Okay, anybody have questions for the applicants? Uh, Commissioner Pruitt. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. Mr. Burgett, what's the status of the mold remediation in your... Uh, we, we currently remediated the mold. We had to encapsulate the, uh, if you're familiar with an Apple Valley split level, we have a crawl space underneath half of it. We have that entirely encapsulated, and we have a dehumidifier that runs 24 hours a day. Um, and then we have an additional dehumidifier in the other part of the basement, uh, and that keeps the moisture in check. There is moisture around the edges, um, and we had four different companies come out and give us bids about doing uh, essentially like a drain tile system. I think we're going to go with a drain tile system that utilizes a sump pump. And Would it be usable after that point when this work's complete? Um, even then, it's not going to provide, because of our sensitivity, it's unlikely, and because of the yeah, the, there's a crawl space entrance issue. The crawl space is limited to 18, an 18 by 18 inch entrance. Plus, it's just not a lot of space. We're just the previous homeowner um, put a put a uh, bathroom down in the basement where there would typically be storage space, dry storage. So there's really no storage space at all. Um, in the, with the utility, we have a small utility room. We have the bathroom, and then we have a small laundry room. Um, which we've, we've again, done everything we could to kind of massage and refine it and, and put shelving in, but it's, it's really tight. Well, uh, one additional question. You had a survey completed, or was there any report out on that? It was hard for me to follow some of the yeah. pictures that you had shared, but I'm I didn't sorry know if you had any that. dimensions or any, uh, any report that gave um, credence to the, all the different, you know, this elevation and this neighbor's oh, height sure. and... It was hard to follow. No, um, the the surveyor did not take into account the other dimensions. Um, I did that myself. Um, I'm hoping that it's enough of a visual display that you can see that it's clearly lower um, than the other land around it. But the surveyor worked specifically on the lot lines. That was all they did. They did not do elevation. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Scanlon. Madam Chair, these decisions for us, at least for myself, are difficult. Um, I've seen a number of these for that we've done, and actually at our last meeting we had one, too, that was extremely difficult to, um, to review and totally understood the perspective of the applicant, but we weren't able to grant the, the variance. And... Our hands as a planning commission is somewhat tied in terms of issuing variances that it's outlined um, with the state that we can't, we have to be um, um, very specific in how those are issued. And if I'm not mistaken, that all came about by a roof height issue that took place and went through the court systems and we ended up where we're at today. Um, I have no concern or issues with your building design. I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that and the idea of the, how you have it uh, with the multiple s stories and so forth, but it seems like we're coming down to it's a building design. Totally understand what your needs are and what you want to do with it, but the building could be changed in some way to reduce it, to bring what it, bring it within the 16 feet. That is the maximum height. So my, I guess my question is, is what, I mean, you said you've looked at 
redesigning and doing some different things is what can be done to to mitigate or bring that within the compliance so that you're not going to need the variance. I'm glad you and, asked. And and that's really what it's coming down to because sure. right now I, I I'm, I'm not personally seeing where there's I understand your circumstances but right. that's not a, um, a to me a hardship to allow it for a, a variance. <clears throat> Of course. Go ahead. So to speak to that point, Commissioner Scanlon, the one thing, um, if you can, sir, can you, uh, who's around the slideshow? Can you uh, back up the slides to the plans, and I'll just, I'll just have you move through the plans, the building plans. Yep. Um, go through till it's the side elevation. And I, I drew all the plans, so I'm really sorry. Mm -hmm. From me. This is what photocopying and scanning. One more. Uh, right there. So essentially what it comes down to, the peak of the roof is in the middle of the building. That's mm -hmm. That would happen either way. The one thing that we could do to uh, deal with that would be to move that platform if we wanted to have storage that's up off the ground. And because of my woodworking equipment, it has to be up a certain height. So the one thing we could do is move that platform to the middle which would allow that when the stairs hit the platform, you would have a higher headroom. The reason why we can't do that is because I have lockers that need to be secured and also contain the dry storage that need to be secured to a wall that shouldn't, for safety concerns, hang out in the middle. So I did consider moving the platform to the middle to increase the height, but because I don't want to create a safety hazard, um, I, that's why I did that. Or well, that's why I don't feel that that would be a feasible option. That's why I kept it with that design. Any other questions? Uh, I guess my only other comment to to that is that I mean you're you're talking about kind of designing the building around a specific storage element um, or um, um, <coughs> mechanism to, to store things. So then I guess my next question would be is what other uh, um, options are there so that you can make design changes in the building to allow it to meet the 16 feet? So... Um, I get. I guess my question might go back to Kathy. Is that when we work on these things, we usually try to find a way of coming up with a option, option versus taking a vote and then not giving you the response that you want. So, um, and as you mentioned, you do have a. There's a fee process involved in this. So, is it something that we? I suggest table, and then you have a continued discussion on figuring out how to look at reducing the height versus us going forward. I'm just, I'm again trying to look at a way of accommodating you. Um, yeah, I guess my question would be um, you know, it seems like given given the points that we've made, I'm just wondering, like, I, I don't know a whole lot about this whole process. It mm -hmm. seems like I didn't get a chance to hear all of what Kathy said when she was out because I was working, but I caught the tail end of it. Um, and I was actually a little bit surprised because I know you said you weren't necessarily planning to approve or deny it. So um, that's what you told Paul when you were leaving. So I guess I'm just wondering, you know, what is the, what is the concern that would make this unreasonable like I said, I think we presented good evidence that it would be actually aesthetically pleasing. We're planning to match the siding of the shed to the house. Um, our neighbors are all in favor of it. Like, I don't think it would, I think it would actually add value to our neighborhood. We've got um, a house, you know, next to us that doesn't look as great, could use some updates. I think it would actually add value to our neighborhood. And I think the, the, um, the structure of it, like, Paul's a very skilled um, builder and knows, he's built a lot of homes. He's done a lot of this kind of stuff. So he knows his stuff. Um, and I can attest that he does everything with excellence. <laughs> Knowing him for the amount of time that I've known him, he does everything with a lot of excellence. And so I, I would just say that 
um, you know, if there's a reason that why it wouldn't be reasonable, I think it's, you know, we're, we're totally willing to, to accept that. And, but I, again, I think Paul's gone to the length to try to figure out everything he can do, um, that would allow for us to have this. And, and we are putting a lot of money into it and we're putting a lot of time into it. And he's taking time out of, um, other things, you know, to really, do this with excellence. So I feel like, you know, it's, it's a reasonable ask and that's where I'm just wondering if there's something that, um, that would make it unacceptable. I just feel like it's a reasonable ask. So, yeah. Do you want to answer that or should I, I can. Uh, I, I, it, I, my concern from a staff standpoint is that, um, I, I think the petitioners have their heart and mind set on a design and a plan. And I, I think what they're asking for is over and above what the code allows for. 720 square feet is a three stall garage equivalent. And then to have additional storage on top of that is, is a big ask. The, the concern that I have from a staff standpoint is um, compatibility with the neighborhood. Will there be an issue? Um, the, they say that the neighbors are okay with it, but there is a concern that this will be a towering structure and that will negatively impact neighboring properties. So um, I'm, I'm sympathetic to um, the situation, the needs. Some of the information that was provided tonight was brand new information. The, the slides and the information about the mold is, is new information. So there is opportunity to come back and, and do further checking. I'd leave that with the petitioner. Um, but at this point, staff is still not able to, to, um, to support the request. The other thing that I would ask is what the ceiling height is for the first floor. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would have loved to, I actually, I would have loved to address those things. I, I asked on several occasions, what are the parameters? Like, what are the considering factors? And I was rebuffed um, several times. So I, I did try and speak to these issues. I didn't know that mold was going to be something that storage was an issue. I, I'm trying my best to work within the parameters here. And, and I think I can show you, like, I wasn't given any information that I could submit a PowerPoint or any sort of information for this meeting. I was contacted on Monday about it. So, so, so I would have loved to do that. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that mold would make a difference on my opinion. Yeah. Or not. I, you know, I think what it comes down to for me is that there are, and I empathize with you too. I mean, that's what we all do is we, we totally see your side, but our job is to Oh, city code and, and all that other stuff. Sure. You know, as far as a shortage of storage, there's a lot of us who have a shortage of storage. So to me, that doesn't approve the fact that you need more storage room. You know, um, that's kind of my thoughts anyway. <laughs> Anybody else want to tune in to their thoughts? Commissioner Sandel? Um, Madam Chair, I... I totally sympathize with you. Like I, you know, it's. I, I think. I think. I'm. I have to echo what what you guys are saying. Is our job is to be consistent, and and stick with what the code says. And that's that's where it becomes hard because it's like I would love to be able to grant this for you, but I don't know that I can do that and then maintain consistency when others come in with their variance requests. So it's hard. It's. Commissioner Mohawk, Mohawk. Madam Chair, like um, you're kind of there's a lot of sympathy here for the situation, but as Commissioner uh, Scanlon had said, it started out by saying we're kind of bound by the, the you know the terms and conditions and the definitions in in the ordinances, and so when it comes to at least as I'm looking at it, the practical difficulty side of it. And that's the second page of the, the staff report. That, my apologies there. But, uh, you know, you look at the second bullet point, and, and the, the plight of the applicant is due to circumstances unique to the property not created by the applicant. 
and th that normally has to do with the the property itself not I guess I, I could be convinced otherwise but I don't know that the 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 having water issues in the house is something that's completely unique um, and 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 then the other thing too is is once you get there you it's obviously frustrating I can't even imagine having to deal with all you're having to deal with but having to tr try to find dry storage because of mold doesn't equate to or ne ne necessitate an 18 foot height building I mean then I think that's the, the at least for me I can't speak for it I think that's the thing is is there a way to satisfy your need for storage without having to go above the the the, the 16 feet and it and it, it, it's, it's a cool structure I like it I think it's really nice but it's as, as it's been pointed out it's um, we're we're just kind of bound by what the what the what the code will allow. Can you put another storage building on there, on the back here? Uh, Planner Bodmer suggested that she did some configurations in her in her document that suggested that. I would submit to you that the interpretation is left up to the reader. Um, when you look at, I read seven hundred fifty square feet in area. And I see that to be a 750 square foot footprint. So <laughs> I, you know, when you consider our costs, and, and I would just submit to you that it is unique to this property. Yes, some people deal with lack of storage. A lot of people deal with lack of storage. But we have literally none. I mean, we don't have storage, and we're paying money for storage of our basic things. There's stuff that I haven't seen of my own. I mean, just daily use things of mine that I haven't seen since we got married in 2021. We're and not, we don't have a lot of stuff by any means. That's not people. unique, and it's caused yeah. by the property. So that's, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just respectfully just pointing out that, yeah, yeah. There's, there are things that are unique caused by the property to our situation that we are under, you know, pressure for. And it's, we're not married to a design. That's, that's not the intent at all. Um, we're, we're more thinking of this, you know, we got the idea from our neighbor, um, but it, how much more square foot would you get by going up to 18 feet on there? Well, I mean, we would, would you be, be able to. We would be able to use 260 square feet. So I mean, is that going to put everything that you have in storage right now in yes, there? Yes, yes. I did a calculation, and that's the square footage that we need. So I did calculate that out. Yes, I have. Yes, correct. Commissioner Scanlon. I, I guess the, I think the question at this point is: Do you want us to go forward with a vote tonight, or do you want to take in? work with Kathy who's extremely experienced with these type of matters to come up with a solution and then come back to us if that's needed um, it, it's totally up to you I'm just again we're just trying to look at a solution for you and um, <coughs> without I personally would not want to put it on the table I think we should vote on it. I don't know that that's going to make any kind of a difference by coming back. I would tend to agree. I've, okay. I've worked with yeah. uh, Kathy for some time now. I actually, in our first conversation, I wanted to increase this to four feet to make it feasible, and I was told by Kathy that you would be more amenable to a two-foot strike, to a two-foot increase. So it was actually led to believe that that would be more feasible in your mind. Um, so, you know, if... if mm -hmm. I also told Kathy at the very beginning, I said, hey, if this doesn't work, you know, I'm willing to pay the $183 and take my turn and, and try it. Because we honestly did try and work everything else out, you know, as it is. And we, we'll, we'll make do with what we have. I mean, we're, we're no, by no means going to be bitter or upset about it. We appreciate it. I understand you guys are all volunteers, right? <laughs> yeah. So thank you all for being here and sitting through all this and... I'm sure that you've all got a passion for it, but I understand that you guys are all our neighbors and you're all volunteers, so thank you for doing that. Um, and, and we're happy with, you know, if you if you decide that this isn't acceptable, then that's fine. We we feel like we've made a good case that this is a reasonable use of our property. Um, and if you don't think so, then I guess you don't, but we think it is. You did good work. Thanks. We just have to, and have to do what's right. 
Yep. So. Appreciate it. Thanks. There are for, uh, no further comments. I will close this public hearing. It is the policy of the Planning Commission not to act on it. Have I been here yet? No. Not a public hearing. Public it wasn't a public hearing, was it? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's why this was upside down. <laughs> All right. Do we have a motion to make? Madam Chair, <laughs> I recommend a denial of a variance to increase the height of a 720 square foot accessory storage building from 16 feet to 18 feet, finding that the request does not meet the code requirements for the practical difficulty. Second. A uh, motion made by Commissioner Scanlon and seconded by Commissioner Schindler. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. <coughs> Other business. Let's go to number six. Mr. Tim Benetti, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on your agenda, you'll note that we have uh, upcoming Wednesday, June 21st, is our next meeting. I do not believe we have any items scheduled for that night. Yes, we do. Oh, we do. So variance, at least. we'll have a variance scheduled for that <laughs> evening. Thank you, Kathy. Higher ground as well. And possibly higher ground will be back. We also okay. have our next meeting of July 19th, and our city council is being held tomorrow, which is sort of unusual that we have a planning commission and a council back to back. We were very much appreciate, I'm sure that the applicants do, both from the school and Constellation Coffee, we're able to put them on the agenda for tomorrow night with the assumption that had they received a favorable recommendation for me tonight, which they did, all three, uh, we would be prepared to present those instead of having them wait until July for that meeting because they are off one meeting uh, for this month. So we appreciate that, and also on July 13th will be that next council meeting. With that, I have no other further comments. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion made. They must be excited to, to adjourn. Uh, by Commissioner Scanlon, seconded by Commissioner Schindler. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned.